Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier, and thank you once more for stopping by. It's appreciated. Um, I've also started publishing my daily podcast on YouTube, so if you want to have a look at it on YouTube, you're most welcome. The link is on Rich Wrap Ups. And I've reposted it, something I wrote uh, last year in March about how Africa's future is not seen in the rearview mirror, and I think a lot of that still applies. My home thoughts return to southern palms and the sea, which was just so beautiful one morning, totally still, it was like glass. I'll put this photograph up, it really is beautiful down there. I'm still reading Gravity's Rainbow and in an in a Thomas Pynchon grip, and it's surreal, it's luminous, seriously, on point. And my favorite, I must admit, comes from Bleeding Edge. No matter how the official narrative of this turns out, it seemed to Heidi, these are the places we should be looking, not in newspapers or television, but at the margins, graffiti, uncontrolled utterances, bad dreamers who sleep in public and scream in their sleep. And then I came across this, uh, perhaps history this century, thought eigenvalue, is rippled with gathers in its fabric, such that if we are situated as stencils seem to be, at the bottom of a fold, it's impossible to determine warp, woof, or pattern anywhere else. By virtue, however, of existing in one gather, it is assumed there are others compartmented off into sinuous cycles, each of which had come to assume greater importance than the weave itself and destroy any continuity. Thus, it is that we are charmed by the funny-looking automobiles of the 30s, the curious fashions of the 20s, the particular moral habits of our grandparents. We produce and attend musical comedies about them and are conned into a false memory, a phony nostalgia about what they were. We are accordingly lost to any sense of continuous tradition. Perhaps if we lived on a crest, things would be different. We could at least see. I'll put up a photograph of the sunset in Mombasa, uh, which I'm quite fond of. And then I took that photograph yesterday morning of the cloud, of the clouds and at sunrise. And then Chris Orwa, a follow on Twitter. Um, said uh, that actually it was a very similar uh, skyline and very rare and early morning skyline in Cairo as well as in Nairobi. And uh, I'll put up a photograph or two of uh, the photographs he posted. Then I went back to listen to Queen, the Millionaire Waltz, which is a lovely song. And I thoroughly enjoyed my morning before everyone came in playing it rather loudly. Gates, Barack Obama, and denying reality in the Middle East. The talk about former Defence Secretary Bob Gates' blistering new memoir, Duty, has focused on the description of President Barack Obama's tense 2011 Situation Room meeting with his top military advisers. A frustrated Obama expresses doubts about General David Petraeus. Then U.S. command in Afghanistan and questions whether the administration can do business with Afghan President Hamid Karzai. As I sat there, Gates wrote, I thought the president doesn't trust his commander, can't stand Karzai, doesn't believe in his own strategy, and doesn't consider the war to be his. For him, it's all about getting out. Frankly, I don't think the president was that far wrong. I wouldn't have trusted Petraeus, who I think would become the poster child of a counterinsurgency program which might not necessarily have been getting the results it was trumpeted to be getting. De Hamid Karzai, is always, always whenever I think of him, I think he's on quaaludes and quaking behind a curtain. 
with um, his with his longtime foe Mullah Omar, the one-eyed Mullah Omar, prowling somewhere. And uh, Republicans have, squee uh, have seized on criticisms as proof that Obama was a dithering commander in chief. Democrats, in turn, hailed Obama for standing up to the Pentagon brass, and I do the same in this instance. Um, and then uh, Gates is talking, saying there are limits to what even the strongest and greatest nation on earth can do. Um, then this article is going back to a speech that President Obama delivered at the UN in September when he stated that the United States would use all elements of our power, including military force, to secure four core interests in the region. He vowed to confront external aggression against our allies, ensure the free flow of energy, dismantle terrorist networks that threaten our people, and not tolerate the development or use of weapons of mass destruction saying that he then did not follow through and intervened in Iraq. Um, and uh, Benjamin Rhodes is his, Obama's deputy national security advisor. He says, it's not in America's interest to have troops in the middle of every conflict in the Middle East or to be permanently involved in open-ended wars in the Middle East. Um, and, uh, and basically saying, uh, Rhodes rejecting the criticism that uh, the administration has not advanced U.S. interests and said that there are many tools in the toolbox. Um, and in this article saying that the administration sounds a pacifist term, and this is surely referencing Syria, um, but has carried out covert drone strikes that have killed more than 2,000 people around the world. Issues around the messaging of the Syrian situation um, and including by saying that Americans do benefit from a world economic order based on cheap, reliable, and Middle Eastern oil, pretending we don't is a fantasy. And I concluded by saying, you know, in point of fact, I think President Barack Obama has been an incredibly <coughs> hard-nosed proponent of hard power. The drone strike stance make that point incontrovertibly. Further, President Obama has deployed a very sophisticated hard power strategy, which is, has encompassed assassinations, evidently, 21st century cyber and currency warfare as well. Iran has been at the sharp end of that. I <coughs> disagree with the scale of the assassination program and think signature strikes are simply an outrage, but feel that President Obama has actually had the US national interest front and center in a way other presidents sometimes I felt didn't. With respect to Syria, I think the president made the right decision. The rebellion was led by and has continued to be led by a motley crew of ne'er-do-wells and hooligans. And to have ordered airstrikes in a situation where the opposition might have conducted a false flag operation was in fact politically unconscionable. And I think the president is to be respected for having stood down some very bloodthirsty allies. That's my view. Abe Shinzo's visit to Africa and the Middle East begins Thursday and will include stops in Oman, Ivory Coast, Mozambique, and Ethiopia. Um, and I found it interesting that uh, Oman, uh, surely an interesting destination. Currency markets, the euro is a little bit softer, 135.78. Dollar index 81.08, and the dollar, in, the dollar is at four-month highs, but looks stretched in the near term. Japanese yen 104.84, Swiss franc 0.9122, pound 164.46. Aussie back below 89 at 0.8882, fell for a third day. On December the 18th, it touched 0.8821, which was the weakest since August 2010. We're clearly going down there. India rupee 62.185, South Korean one ten sixty four twenty, Real softer 239.52, Egyptian pound 695.67. And reference that article yesterday about uh, Egyptians being allowed to transfer out $100,000 uh, during this calendar year, and I think that softened the pound. South, South African ran 1076.66, and that's headed now directly to 11. 
Japan's currency has, flipped, has slipped 15% over the past 12 months. That's the, making it the worst performer amongst the 10 developed nation currencies. The euro has rallied 8.6%. The dollar has gained 4%. I'll put up a three-month chart of the dollar index, and I think it looks stretched near term. I think probably sell above 81, just for a short-term trade. Um, uh, policymakers gather on Jan 28 to 29 to consider the next step in their strategy of gradually reducing the pace of purchases. Um, it's expected by the majority of uh, forecasters that the Fed will trim by in $10 billion increments over the next seven meetings. A majority of participants judge that the marginal effic efficacy of purchases was likely declining as purchases continue. Um, so there you go. And what concern about excessive risk taking in the financial sector? As I said previously, I think uh, the uh, bark of the taper um, will turn out softer than the bite. Uh, sorry, the bark will have turned out um, louder than the bite. Euro dollar 135.78 area. My stop remains at 133.80. I like this comment by a Japanese uh, fellow saying, "We'll see a kind of deja vu in the eurozone." And he was saying, talking referencing the yen when that when the yen went through that period of enormous strength. The euro will be one of the strongest currencies in the world. That's a thought. Dollar yen 104.84. Uh, not too far off a five-year low. Gold at 1227.27, and I look for a thousand dollar print in uh, 2014. Declined 0.3%, uh, then dropped um, uh, quite sharply after settlement to touch 1217.70. Now a bit of a bounce. Um, crude oil, I'll put up a one month chart of that, $92.58 last, and $100 was really nosebleed territory. In looked very attractive to sell it at that level. Coming to Africa, the fighting in South Sudan is making for odd alliances, said Cameron Hudson, former director for Africa at Washington's National Security Council. This is in an article Katrina Manson has written, and indeed, and you know my belief that this, that it is the epicenter of this collision between China and the USA. And therefore, it's interesting that um, uh, Salva felt that he could embrace um, Bashir so openly and so quickly. Um, thousands of people are fleeing the South Sudanese city of Bentu amid fears of a government offensive to recapture the oil-rich area from rebels. Many people are taking refuge in a UN base in Bentu. Niak Majal, Majak Nial, the mayor of Bor, told CNN that rebel troops have been driven away from his town which has exchanged hands several times during three weeks of violence. Then on the other side, Kong said that in the Battle for Bor, the state capital Jongli, about 70 miles north of Juba, rebel fighters destroyed two T-72 tanks and four military trucks. He said his side had killed dozens of government soldiers, including generals, and you can see in the fog of war, not sure who to believe. South Sudan talks hang in the balance over detained rebels. This is seen as a deal breaker at the moment. Oil production fell by 45,000 barrels per day to 200,000, apparently. Uh, the CAR leader, Jotia, um, the French diplomatic source saying, in Jotia and us, it's not a love story. The quicker he goes, the better things will be. He's widely expected to leave imminently. Mozambique's Renamo says its militias are regrouping in Inhamabene. The opposition Mozambique National Resistance Party said its former militiamen are regrouping in the southern province of Inhamabene in, in preparation for possible attacks by the army. The militiamen were dismissed from the National Army and have demanded the party leadership take action after the security forces attacked the party's headquarters in October. The party gave a directive to regroup. We will continue to run this government, sorry, uh, to regroup. Renama isn't recruiting new militiamen, he said. President Zuma was quoted as telling ANC supporters in Zulu, we will continue to run this government forever and ever, whether they, the detractors, like it or not. 
the South African All share, bucking the general sub Saharan African trend this year is down 1.18%. Dollar versus Rand headed straight to 11. I told you once it crossed 10.55, it was headed to 11. We're now at 10.63, 10.76, 38 on the term. A one month chart. The Egyptian stock market up 1.54% this year. That's a 36 month high. I wrote about this in that article I referred to yesterday, Africa remains in the sweet spot. In that article I was talking about Geldessa having a star tent um, and how I was looking at the stars which felt so close you could practically touch them. Um, and on that note um, I'll put up a photograph of um, the bed which lies overlooking the Galana River. There is another place where you can sleep upstairs and watch the stars. I'll put a photograph of Hannah sitting on the sofa up there. Um, and finally, of the elephants crossing the Galana River. Uh, we actually were driving back and we met these very elephants. It was a much bigger group. It's not all of them. They're not all in the photograph. And we, we just switched the car off and we were in the middle of them for about 30 minutes. The Nigerian all shares up 1.21% this year, the Ghana Stock Exchange up 2.02% this year. The Zambian president is planning a sovereign wealth fund to boost investment. I found this interesting, surging mobile internet demand is straining African telecom networks. Um, uh, Mahmoud Sami um, told uh, the Trade Arabia publication that the Middle East and Africa could see a 31% traffic leap on consumer internet by 2017 from a 10% growth level in 2012. Lots of reports out about Africa's per capita wealth um, and obviously South Africa is, has the highest. Ethiopians remain the poorest with assets of $260 a person last year, while Angolans have grown their wealth the fastest. Um, I like this quote from the New York Times. Mr. Salanga wore a giant Afro wig, a hooded sweatshirt that read Africa is the future, and strummed a black Fender electric guitar with a white pick guard. And then he says, just because I'm an African with black skin, it doesn't mean that I won't win if I try. Don't tell me where I can and can't do, went the refrain. I can change the world. We all can. Safaricom closed at a record high yesterday of 11.35 and set its second consecutive record uh, all-time high in 2014. It's up 4.608%. Uh, it's trading higher again today. I have a target of 13.50 by the full-year results. I'll put up a link for an interview I did with Mr. Colin Moore at the time of his first half results, which were very muscular. I put up a photograph of him when I called it man of the moment at that time and the price has surged so much higher since then. Geothermal in Kenya, full steam ahead, very interesting article from Beyond Bricks. Um, and uh, you know, geothermal has a very small footprint, very green, lots of it down the Rift Valley. We've known about it for quite a while. 534 days ago, I went to a function of Carrier 4, that which this article is. And then also, I wrote in July 2012, e-money has happened, geothermal is happening, crude oil will happen, all contributing to fight an aphrodisiac. Um, I'll put up the link again for Christian Lagarde's speech at MindSpeak. We'll have edited the entire footage um, <coughs> later on today. There's a link for her speech, which was really broad, erudite, and I wrote a piece prior to that saying Mind Speak was an ice cream Sunday, and Christine Lagarde's appearance was like a maraschino cherry that you find on top of a Sunday. Kenya Shilling has firmed a little bit to 86.814. The Nairobi All Shares had a fantastic start to the Sierra's up 2.707%. The NAC 20 regained 5,000 yesterday and is up 1.7241%. The all share rallied 0.515% yesterday. Um, Safaricom was up 2.25%. Diamond Trust up 1.47%. Arm up 2.162%. And they all set record highs. Kengen's been in a soft spot of late, down 24.68, 75% since December 
2013, the insurers were real buoyant, with Jubilee up 4.609%, Liberty 4.33%, and Britain 3.246%. I concur with Madame Lagarde who said yesterday, that was the day before, at a press conference that we're talking about tapering, not tightening. And therefore I think the taper's bark will turn out to be worse than the bite. And that Frontier and SSA funds will continue to see an increased allocation in 2014, a trend that began in 2012, and that the trend of increasing investor allocations to SSA remains intact. Liquidity to these funds in January, I think, pushed the all share up 5% this month, in my view. Good breath in the market yesterday. Let's see how we play on uh, today. Once again, thank you for stopping by. It's appreciated. If you want to track the live feed from the Nairobi Securities Exchange in real time, uh, whether you want to look at the whole market or an individual stock demand supply, just register on rich.co.k, get a password, it's free, and then go to Rich Live during trading hours. Once again, thanks a lot.